BJ, thank you so much for having us. We're just about to uh, do our Freedom Finite 3, and you came from Hawaii. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. And we were just talking about um, Hawaii. Love us, Frank. We need to get out there. Yes. For real? Yeah. Yeah. You, they love you out there, man. Nice, man. Same personality. Love Jiu Jitsu guys. Right? And, and, and Bella. You know? That was all the that was all the era that they loved. That's the golden era yeah, when we were fighting them. Yeah. You know, and they they love you out there. Yeah, It'd be funny. great to get Bella out there doing a 100%. doing a, a seminar or something for yeah, let's do for it, the man. kids in Hilo or something. Yeah, that'd be great for everybody. Yeah, so especially to like you know that would just give a lot of motivation yeah, to the yeah. younger. So yeah. it's you know all about inspiration. That's everything. Yeah, because I've always been inspired by different people growing up. If you think about it, I mean, like everybody from like you read characters, Bruce Lee or whatnot, or different characters in books. Yes. You're inspired by it and you mimic them. So I always feel bad when other people now that you've made it, I'm like, you know, you made it and you were inspired by people. You don't want to be an inspiration for others to kind of lay the, the, the pathway for the next generation. Like, I think that's selfish. Totally. And and it just happens while you're just on your journey anyway, yeah. right? And yeah, that's gonna, funny. She's already inspiring, you know? Once so I do they tell you can't wait to go story. back and tell my daughter about her. How old is your daughter? Um, 14. Oh, that's perfect. Is she, is she training at all? She hasn't really got ah, trained. Yeah. yeah, she'll she train when she brother comes out there. That'll yeah, that's her. why. It's different seeing dad do it, but you see another girl. You're right, right. there you go. That's, that's what I believe. So yeah, last night, so yeah, after the things, Jennifer reminded me of it, a funny story. So it's probably like 2002, and BJ's in the club, and, you know, I came in, and everybody was a fighting town. So I saw him, it was the first time I actually got to actually meet him up close and talk, you know, and at this time he was already a superstar in the UFC, and I was just trying to make my way up, right? <laughs> and, uh, and then so I said, hold on a second, man, hold on, hold on. And so I'm like, because I was like, oh, brother, you're one of my favorite fighters. Ah, shut the fuck I said, no, no, really, man, hold on a second. So I called Jen. I said, babe, and she said, yeah, I'm like, oh, hold on, you're on speakerphone. Real quick, without, no, like, because I didn't set her up. Who's my favorite fighter? She's like, Frank, it's like one in the morning. What are you doing? Like, Who is my favorite fighter? She's like, BJ Penn? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, man. He wasn't, he wasn't yeah. lying. Good times. Good yeah, times, good. yeah. How embarrassing yeah. would that have been? Oh, I know. Like, this is your moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Who, who would you consider your biggest, like, rival? Growing, uh, I, but you fought in, like, every weight class. So man. Who, would you, who, who could she have said that would have been the biggest... Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Who would you... Who no, would be at, at that time, yeah. yeah who, no, what really era was that? You. Yeah. Like, that was Jim's pull for like after you just... Yeah. Came. That was when you went to wars there and came back and then like... uh uh, uh that was actually, I think, during the era where they actually got rid of the one. You remember there was a while? There was no 155. You never yes. had to fight a welterweight. There was a time for about two years or 18 months, I forgot which. I had to go back yeah. where there was no lightweight class it was 155 yeah so you were just fighting whoever whoever they could yeah, we talked about that they got the rid of it right yeah, they the did UFC get got rid that of was it because like, now i'm trying and to then i you. fought at gomi at 155 at rumble on the rock that's right that's because when you did that i think that's and then they, i fought you kind of took the 155 class with you i think that's why they're like well fuck it bj's not here then we're not going to fight in it the poor matt sarah is like 5'2 he's fighting at 170 the time before he really got bigger and should have fought yeah like, that's amazing, Matt. Yeah. Matt won the belt and yeah. wiped out the best, GSP. Yeah, right? I always talk about that. When everybody goes, there's a guaranteed lock. Because like, sometimes when people are talking about Bella, like, hey, look, she's a warrior. She'll fight anybody, anywhere. I mean, like, if you said her to go fight a bear, she's strapping up, right? I'm the one that protects her and pulls the leash back. Like, no, 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 hold on. Let's think through this here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I talk about that people worth fighting for. Because I'm like, there's always a chance. So whoever we fight, I don't want to fight someone who just sucks. Like, oh, it's an easy walkthrough. Like, yeah. yeah, but then they're not worth beating. So then we win and no one cares. But it, we could always, uh, there's always a chance when you're against other trained fighters. This ain't like a bar fight where it's like, right. no chance, right? We're talking another trained fighter, you know? And at that time, when Matt Serra won the uh, Ultimate Fighter, he was uh, a huge underdog. I think still probably, maybe Holly Holm might have beat him as far as the biggest underdog in a title fight. Mm. And he was like, it was like he had no chance to win. Knocked the shit out of GSP, you know what I mean? Right. Like, the point would be at GSP afterwards where I was like, that's kind of weird, but I guess he's just a very open person. He's like, yeah, the referee saved my life, jumped in, saved it. You know, like, do you think it was a bad stoppage? Like, oh. you know, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and GSP is one of the most dominant, to this day still, one yeah. of the most, you know. And, we'd watch him fight right as soon as he came back. We'd all sit down yeah. and watch. What is he doing now? Like, what's his commentary well, stuff? Well, I heard he just, I saw something that he just got out of his contract finally with UFC. So a common commentating contract? No, or? his fighting contract. I think. Oh wow, you finally pulled. Well. Yeah, it's, I yeah, saw you know, it's funny. Like you know, they talk about the fights where they were scored now. Yeah. If they would have scored fights now and scored them that way, then how they do effective damage, you would have won the fight easily with GSP when you. Oh, the, the first time the we first fought. Time, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the first time when they fought, 
BJ, B, uh, G, GSP's face. I mean, when you see him raise his hand, he took BJ down, but never did nothing with it. He yeah, couldn't yeah, pass, yeah, yeah. obviously. He's just fighting to survive, and BJ's guard can't land anything. But on, you know, BJ's just mauled his face, but got taken down every round, right? So they go, oh, he won. And BJ even said, this ain't the ultimate takedown experience, you know? And yeah, now, yeah, yeah. if they would use the effective yeah, damage yeah, criteria. It became that for a while. You're yeah, right. It was. It was like, you yeah. can sit there and beat my ass for four minutes and 55 seconds, and if I blasted a double and yeah. took you down, everybody yeah. goes, he won the round. I'm like, Oh, that that's happens success. all the time. You'd see, uh, uh, you'd see it all. So, but now I think it's swung the opposite way a little too much. Right now, it's like, well, the guy did take him down three times, and he's controlling him. He's landing yeah. shots. You landed a couple shots on your feet. Like I don't think that it negates the takedowns. Now, you know what I mean? Like I was thinking about that in the last UFC, right? Yeah, because it always the judging criteria always yeah. changes. Yeah, we have always... the Peter Yan and uh, Sean O'Malley. I think right? it's showing now that back then it was very wrestling dominant criteria for scoring and now it's very striking orientated for criteria because you know me and bj are fighting and he takes me down and passes my guard cool side control holds me a head and arm choke and let's say i blast out i get up i land one punch boom and he does this and we're, we're squared up round ends like oh you won the fight round it's like what i landed one shot yeah but look at the effect of damage you knocked his head back he, i'm <laughs> right, like but he yeah, took yeah. me down passed it's my guard right? mounted me head and arm me i barely survived and fought out scrambled to my feet like that doesn't count for nothing well what's the damage that it does what damage do you right. do when you do a submission on somebody like i don't even know how to i don't know how to Score quantify that. that yeah it's interesting and and you hear people they they say like we want to get a computer and do this and that and you just think oh, wow. the day i need a computer to tell me who want to fight shoot me yeah <laughs> the yeah. Day i should just say pride need, actually had it right? best I really do. I think Pride actually had the best criteria where they went, if this fight, like basically they're judging on who wins the fight at the end of it. They look at both guys and go, who do we think if this fight kept on going is going to win? Like they go with momentum, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. who's winning this fight? Like who's kicking the shit out of who? And just plain and simple that, like screw to whoever takedowns, maybe that does count towards it, but you got to think in your head, if this fight were to continue, who's winning? And then you kind of sit there and that obviously it's still subjective. It's a gut check. But you sit there and go, well, I think that guy is kicking that guy's ass. It's like, okay, well. That was yeah. pride? That was pride. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah, that, that is. That's the only way. Yeah. Who's kicking that guy's ass? I think who did it longer? And at the that's time, that's what we're doing. Think yeah. about it. That's what fans are like, oh, this guy won the fight. Like, well, you know what I mean? Like, cause especially like, you know, when you have like boxing really gets kicked in teeth by that you know you have 12 rounds in a championship fight right you get you got one guy wins rounds one through three and then guy wins rounds like you know four through 11 but they're kind of slow barely no action happening the fight slowed down the 12th round then the guy won the first three rounds comes out you know uh, you know guns are blazing and they're like oh he won the fight he kicked his ass because yeah the rounds that he won were real dramatic but the other guy won more rounds they yeah. just weren't dramatically won they were strategic not a lot happened he landed a few more shots and cornered but then when you sit there and you check your gut you're like yeah but that guy kicked his ass like, <laughs> yeah right, you're yeah. actually right yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. people play the point game that's the one problem with doing a computer humans are always oh, hacking man. the system yeah, yeah i'm always yeah, gonna yeah. try to find it like you said yeah. oh, does this count does this not count we're gonna play towards the judges so the judging criteria like right now the one rule i hate to death i think i probably bring it up every time we talk it's the only rule I always tell people that where the person creating the penalty is rewarded. So you and I are fighting, and I can't do shit with you on the ground. So I double over, hook you, close my guard, just connect my hands. Then I look at the referee, and the referee goes, you got to work, you got to work. You're trying to work. You're trying to move. You're on top. Uh -huh. You got to take down. You want something. Else. And all I'm doing is just holding on. And I'm looking like, hey, hey, what do I want? I want to get it stood up. I don't want to be on bottom of yeah. the gym, right? So then the referee goes, okay, time, stand up, neutral. And you both get up. I'm like, wait a minute. So the guy causing the infraction, who's being boring, who's not fighting, gets rewarded with a stand-up? Like, wh like, what happens in a street fight? Like, how does he learn how to fight in a real fight? Some guy's on top of him kicking his ass. He can't sit there and, hey, buddy, come over here. Start us neutral. This sucks. You know what I mean? Like, this, that doesn't even have a, a, any kind of a basis in real life. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's a stupid rule. I hate yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hacking the system. Hacking the system. Yeah, 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 guys do. realize, oh, when there's inactivity, you'll start us up. So it made a good sense at the time because it was the top guy who was being inactive. You had these yeah, guys yeah, who were yeah. good wrestlers, and their expression was lay and pray. They would take someone down, and they would just literally put thumbs in their armpit yeah. and put their head on their chest and just control. And it was called laying and praying. Like you're laying down on the top of the guy and pray that you win the decision, right? Yeah. So they're like, hey, if you're inactive, we're going to start you up, which does penalize the guy who's doing the infraction. The guy on top is holding and being, you know, uh, stalling. 
But now the guys on bottom realize, like, they oh, shit. They back. They like, got if I back. slow the fight down, you start me up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. oh, shit, I'm going to just hug the guy and just say, hey, hey, like, I, I don't have to worry about doing a stand-up or learn how to create frames or wedges or any kind of movement. Like, oh, I just got to hug you. I was like, well, that ain't training. That ain't fighting. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Did you ever fight Pride? You were kind of, like, right in the... Who? You. Yeah. For, which I, fight what? Who was your fight with... Uh, oh, I Pride, no, K1. Oh, was K1 when you fought the Machida? Yeah. He fought Machida. No, uh, yeah. At 206, you said you? Well, yeah. I, had no, I think he was 230. He had to cut the yeah, 205. Yeah, I was 185. You but freak of nature. And he won. Man. What? I, I I no, no. You won he, won, he won oh, the decision. Won the, yeah. Oh, I thought he won the decision. I don't remember yeah. correctly then. Who, I mean, of, so K1, UFC, what are all the different organizations you fought uh, in? K1 and UFC, oh, and, and Rumble on the Rock. Anyone K1 that you, yes. stood out more as like, you know what, this is, I I don't want to talk bad about UFC, but anyone that you would like say, I would rather fight for this organization than the other? I, you know what, fighting in Japan was, was fun and, you know, just a different place, different culture. But, uh, yeah, I, and Rumble on the Rock is when I went, when I fought in Hawaii. And uh, I fought in K1 in Hawaii also. What are you, you had close ties with Rumble Ross, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my brother's yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the guy. I don't remember the details of it, but I'm like, wait a minute, that was your yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah, when yeah, we yeah. were talking to you, she was like, oh, he's, he's going to fight on his show. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I so I don't remember the exact. But then um, Elite XC ended up buying all the little shows and they bought Rumble on the Rock too, or they. Mm. they um, absorb some of it and then when it all crashed down you couldn't they own the name so you couldn't restart it again so yeah, almost like, they, it's almost like that was like something that like the UFC made just purpose, to like crush all the these other guys no look hey, <laughs> so you UFC never know that, right? I mean I you're a conspiracy head well no it'll never happen again there, because man. I remember I sat in an office that there was a WT what's the World Trade Commission they, they, the UFC was under investigation for uh, for yeah, right? movies. and I they, I was one of the fighters that was more marquee. I got pulled in, and was asked questions. I kept like, looking at the lawyer. I'm like, okay, I know the truth, but what am I supposed to say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I say the truth, what are my cues? Yeah, I'm like, hey man, give me the baseball signal. Am I swinging <laughs> or am I uh, am I bunning on this one? How did you get your fastball? Fastball. I'm like, uh oh. I mean, obviously it turned out okay, but when they're gobbling up all these smaller eliminating competition, yeah. How did they get out of that? Uh, I don't Money? Know how they got out of it? To be honest with you. Same way they got into it. Yeah. Money. Because yeah. I want to learn just, from you, legends, different organizations, different countries, like all these different things. I'll you learn did. from them, what they did well, what they, they did. What you yeah. liked well, what you didn't like. I mean, some of these you've heard, overheard some of these things that we're doing with it being a fighter-owned league. You know, <laughs> UFL, which for yeah. your fight night is going to be the the feeder league. But uh, you know that really, I was listening yesterday and it really caught caught my eye, caught my ear, and. Uh, uh, very interesting. Very interesting. I, I. It only made sense when I saw Frank involved and I saw everybody. Tito was there, and it just made a lot of sense. And just listening to what you guys had to say, and I, I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, uh, thankful for you pe people like you guys that want to do that for the next generation and and even have that in their minds, you know. So I'm glad you guys are involved with this uh -huh. thing. Glad, well, we can talk for more. Maybe you can have some involvement too and help us out. You know what I mean? Like, you know, over in the your experience and, your, and obviously, you know, your family. I know you're a good businessman, and then also <laughs> politically, I know that you're able to, you know, move and shake pretty well. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you're running oh, for governor. You know, I know. Yeah. We were just talking. We were talking about that earlier. It's like, how much of that do you want to talk about, or do you want to just like forget about all of it? And, you know, that was probably a dark what. 24 months how long yeah it was it was busy it was real busy it was very exhausting and uh, it wasn't it's not a sprint it's a marathon type of thing and it just kept going and especially when you know uh, it's a losing battle like you're up against a whole machine i just yeah i corruptness think of after the whole thing i just think it's just it's just all theater but i had a great time got no hard feelings about nothing i learned a lot and it was it was fun well that's actually fun. how we met was through different political desires of not knowing what we personally want to do like do we want to be the politician route do we want to help other ways what i learned and i don't know you know what frank's ambitions are going forward but politicians are puppets for anybody with the money it's yeah. just i want to i want yeah. to make as much money and help as many good people make as much money as they can so that 
good people can be some puppet masters. Right now, they're, I mean, obviously that's a pipe yeah, dream. Everybody you want to pack, you have control because you can funnel where the money goes and so we can influence other people that have mm -hmm. the right ideas. But I still do have aspirations and in six years, I want to run for a governor of the map. Hey, yeah, well, yeah, I love it. You're building I an army it. with all of us. Uh, Man. He can tell you a few things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, talking hey, to you, like, actually, it was just hearing like solutions, solutions over and over. How about the you hear that word? That's what everybody keeps warning me. They're like, hey man, like I've sat down at a table with a bunch of guys that really tried talking me into this time doing it. It was about eighteen months ago, and, they, <laughs> and thank goodness they were actually honest with me. They're like, look, for the next, you know, while you're running, you're gonna have no life. You won't be able to train your daughter. You know, like you're not gonna have anything for yourself. And they're like, and anything you don't want anybody to know about you, like. You know, they're gonna know. Like they're gonna dig through everything about your history and past, yeah. anything about it. Like so, make sure that you and your wife and your kids have sat down, and everybody knows everything. And <laughs> yeah. I, I was just sitting there going, "All right, in six years I'll be ready." Because I mean, there's certain things that my 13 year old, I don't know if I want to talk to him about. Right? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, we're all young yeah. and stupid and smoke. We probably shouldn't yeah. smoke. It's like, okay, hold on a second. Like, when, he, when, he, when he's 19, I can say, "Hey, Dad, partied and hung out," and you know, so like, you know, we can have those discussions yeah. then. But I mean, really, nothing more bad than that. So it's like. All right, you know what I mean? Like when he's 19, like uh, there's nothing I'll hide from my children at that point. I'd know? love yeah. to see you run for governor. That would yeah. be that would be amazing. That would oh, yeah. be awesome. You have a, a whole army behind you. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, it's closer again now since we're still finding out who the governor will be this time around. So, I, yeah, I wish I'd come up and give a give a speech for you. I'd come up and give a speech for you. That's for sure. Yeah. Hey, that's one thing. I was so uh, into it. I was like, you know what? Just because everything was going down, they kept closing our businesses in. In Hawaii, so I was like, you know what? I was so gung ho, and I was like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this for, um, cause I only wanted to run one, one term, no salary, just one term, just to show the people what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just wanted to. I wasn't there for the office. I was there for the people. Someone I was there trust. for, you know what I mean? Go take a yeah. peek behind the curtain. Yeah, exactly, that exactly what it was. Exact, and, and I knew that they were gonna try to mess with me big time if I go to get reelected again after that first time. But but whatever I think about it now, that it's just theater or whatever, yeah. you know, just a mm -hmm. hey, hey, we need you, you need everybody out there telling the truth and standing up mm -hmm. and you why you why you're running? Because you're gonna tell the truth. That's why. That's if not you wouldn't even out. waste your time. And that's what I would tell people when I do my speech up there. I would, I would say, hey, I don't call my friends and talk about this shit. I don't talk about politics, and then I would just start saying, you know, but this shit is important, what's totally. been going on, and this and that, closing all of our businesses, and all of that stuff. It's during that era, too, that actually, when I met uh, Harrison, and he was starting up his, the, the pack, and, and, and it was actually prime for me, because uh, my father-in-law had passed away. We did, like, an end of life, so we're all at his home as he's passing away, and that night, someone lit our uh, the trees on fire in front of the house. And then, um, so like it turned into this big ordeal, you know what I mean? Like the fire trucks are there, police are there, different neighbors' houses are on fire, you know what I mean? Like they're lighting the houses up. And so uh, it was probably about a week later that we got the report back. The officer goes, okay, the reason why you were targeted, don't worry, it's no one targeting you guys. Because you always got to wonder that, like, hey, did someone know that I was there? They don't like me. They got pissed. I beat their favorite fighter. You know what I mean? Like, is there sending out right, Like, right. why would you light my the front of my father-in-law's house on fire? You know? And it came to find out it's because we had an American flag outside the door. Are you serious? Yeah, and so everybody's house got lit on fire. <laughs> yeah, 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 American yeah. flag, right? And they're like, yeah, you, you know, it was just a bunch of kids country claiming BLM, like you know what I mean? Like, you know, and, and just being idiots. And I'm like, you know, so, the, you know, the, the flag's a sign of racism. Right. And that's when I really, I wanted to step in and go, wait a minute, man, how did the American flag ever become a sign of mm, racism? Yeah. What? Was like, it? I missed that memo, you know what I mean? This like, is a big oppression symbol somehow. Yeah. Like, I, seriously, I, made, I the other day I told the, the wife, I said, I'm going to buy myself a, uh, a Prius and I'm going to put a flag on the bumper. Just fuck with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like short circuiting <laughs> liberals, you know? Which way does this guy go? No, but that just shows you, like, why all of a sudden is the American flag a sign? That's for, crazy. Like, right, like, why? I'm like, because my father's from a different yeah. country. He has a flag on his truck, you know what I mean? Like, he's extremely pro America. He's like, hey, dude, I was born and raised somewhere else. I love it here. Yeah, you know I mean? like I mean, do we have our issues? Well, yeah. What country doesn't have right. problems we can work yeah. on? But like, but as far as like, I don't want to move anywhere else. And everybody, that every asshole that tells me they're like, oh, I'm like, bro, you don't have a passport, do you? 
<laughs> Everybody I know with a passport really loves America. Because, I mean, you travel and go anywhere. I mean, I mean, hell, I mean, like, I, I come back. I mean, even from, you know, I mean, obviously, you go to UK area. It's, you know, pretty much America with an accent. But, like, for the most part, you know, I mean, you go most places. There's some even, dangerous places out Yeah, there. there's some places I've traveled in South America and stuff. I look around like, Jesus. You know, people, oh, poor people, like, no, 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 I've been around poor people. Our poor people have cell phones and get to eat tonight. No, <laughs> there's no such thing. We don't have them in America. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> I've been places where people, like, eat it dogs is. and shit. I, like, watch them. I'm like, oh, my. God Aww. and and it you you do need people fighting for all this stuff and, and for why he's gonna run for governor and you knew and, and that's why even now I feel you know I I turned over every stone I went to every single island some islands I never even been to before went there a couple times and you know what I mean and just ran around the whole state and, and did everything and you need no matter what, because that's, you can get the most attention to while you're running for governor because they're like, oh, he's one of the candidates, he's in it, you know, and, and you, and you'll see so right away how one big, as a way to influence to help yeah, you. and you, and you'll realize like how big all of this stuff is. I mean, the guy lying on the side of the road can give you advice, you know what I mean? And this stuff is like, while I was doing this thing in Hawaii, I was a thousand times bigger than I ever was um, when I was a UFC champion. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's how big this stuff is. But you know what though? What what I would always talk and I always would say, and that's then that's gonna definitely be with you also, is that you resonate past the politics with these people. You know, the, this guy, the, all these guys are politicians. They're political entrepreneurs. They're just doing what they gotta do to get to the next level. And you gotta, and that's that's yeah. where you can connect with these people. You you resonate past all of this, but you don't talk to people about this crap. Nobody does. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're here because there's, a, you know, there's a couple of things that need to be straightened out. You know, and you, but you already said it, and that's the truth. The, the, I think the seed of all the corruption in, in the politics, like their team, my team, like I think it's us. For, you know, uh, the, I think that all the politicians are are in, and they're on one team, and everybody else, black, white, gay, straight. Are on the other team, and they constantly try to say things, that, and the narration is to separate us. So we yeah. fight each other, that's and not fighting the true enemy. It's like, hey, yeah. like, keep them busy with each other, and then yeah. that way they don't go at us. Because every politician I know, that's the whole think thing. About it, they all become rich becoming politicians. Every one crazy? of them, they, they go yeah. in. You look at it, go, well, you can use that's not insider yeah. trading to, to to tell your husband or to do this or like you look at everybody's bank account. So that's why when you said you wouldn't run and make any money, it's like, well, that to me is like how it should be. Like the Greeks yeah. used to do that. If you were in politics in the, during that era, you know, you were a Greek politician, like you got a robe, you got a, a stipend for food and a place to sleep. You didn't get to have property, you didn't get to have money, you didn't get to benefit from your position of political power. And not that I don't think we need to force our guys into a stable yeah, yeah. role, but at the same time, I think there needs to be like when I run for governor, I want to be like, hey, look, this is my bank accounts, this is what I'm making. My I'm not going to become rich yeah. off yeah. of the end of my political career. My spouse isn't right? trading, you know, a huge hedge fund that can potentially benefit yeah. off of my. See, like, that would have sparked my ear to vote for somebody like, you know, with BJ going, oh, wait a minute. So you're not going to take money. You're not going to do this. You already have money. So you're. So when you make a decision, it's not in your best interest. You make a decision. Of what's in my best interest is your constituent. Yeah. I'm all, if they all, if everybody in politics uh, did that right now, I don't know. Should be bitching and complaining. Mm -hmm. the, the last thing they'll ever let inside is is somebody that don't that they don't know. That's a businessman that's done any business that's ever even walked into a new room and no negotiated with somebody like Dana White before that's really you know went to court with strong people and done stuff that's not the kind of guy they kind of let that kind of person inside oh, yeah. and that's I just solid. and that's why I say it's just it's just well without having some uh, kind of Epstein type dirt on you it's like, hey, right. you, can, you can be in the yeah, club we gotta yeah, make sure we have a gun on yeah, your head you know what I mean like, you know, totally, yeah. hey this this uh, dossier will release it if you ever open your mouth you know what I mean yeah, yeah. I guess they still protect people yeah it's gotta be the scariest the whole thing, thing the, the whole thing I, I just because I don't have to think how would anybody in our lifetime really win a big governor or presidential election unless they had some, you can't even imagine if after the fight you go, okay, unanimous decision, the other guy won. Well, let me see the, let me see the judges' scorecards. Nope, you can't look at that. You can't look at that. You just yeah. got to know this guy won unanimous decision. That's all you got to know. And that's all it is. I mean, how is anybody ever going to, the day, the day of the election, you know the day of the fight, you're like, okay, today... I've either got to step up or I can be a pussy. I can either step up and do something or I can just be a coward and just have fear and let the whole thing overtake me today. The, the day of the election, there's none of that. You just sit there and you just have <laughs> no control of nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's so helpless. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like, okay, they're going to tell me. Like you said, and, 
I guess I'm gonna be told who my no, and and uh, and uh, if if only a certain amount of people on the meter, they don't even have to say who won anyway, right? If a tree falls in the middle of the forest and it doesn't, well, when you the meter, does it make a sound? No. Nobody saw it. Does it make a sound? Yeah, they've been. I mean, I think they. I mean, obviously, big corporate companies are. The media has been known for a long time, but I think social media actually threw a wrench in that. Until now, mm -hmm. they've controlled it as much as you know. Now yeah. it's like, oh, fake news, fact checking, and then they can eliminate your, your thoughts. That's why the boy. Yeah. Now Elon you know, is like, I think this is awesome. It's better. Yeah, and it's like, why are you so paranoid? fact checking yeah. Hillary now I, and yeah, Biden. Like, they are. Because I mean, that's how it should be, though. Yeah. Now. I mean, look, I don't need you to tell me what's real or not real because information's out there. Yeah. Let, I'll hear it and I'll take the onus upon myself like to go look else. it up. Like yeah. jiu-jitsu, when they show the move in the middle of the class, I can decide to take it or not. Yeah, just if I go, when I'm going to show you this because it's deadly, it's like, well, <laughs> it's let me make that decision. <laughs> 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 I might make that decision. Let me make that decision. I might still lick it. <laughs> 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 but look at tap, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> but after going through that, I am impressed that you still are gonna run because we do like even though they're puppets, we do need somebody that still. No, is you need to. you need somebody out there constantly saying the truth, you know, and that is inspiring. And I may see what I was, you know, what I'm gonna f I'm gonna do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Frank's doing yeah. it, you know. Hey, that's that, a good that, point. It, yeah, how, and I I knew a big part of it while this was all going on, and I was running was how do you change the next generation? Inspire them. Hawaii, that's why I was like, Hawaii needs to build five more stadiums and, and, and uh, they should have the Olympics Hawaii because th that's when you, you'll see how many stories will there be, oh, the Olympics came to Hawaii, but we were homeless. But I knew that day, I know I couldn't go to the Olympics, but I knew that day I was going to be the 100 meter champion someday. That's how it starts, man. Dude, that'll give you chills. That's what, that's, how, that's, everything is inspiring people, it's, right? And the word I always said, enthused, that yeah. means you're with God, walking, walking hand in hand with God when you're enthused and you're motivated and you're, you know? What, what's the uh, ambition now? Just get some rest? <laughs> yeah, I'm still tired. I'm still exhausted from all of that campaigning because I, yeah, so I, when I went out and I was so gung-ho about this, and I went to my first uh, event, and they're like, hey, you got to talk. And I'm like, what do you mean I got to talk? Just tell them I got their back. They're like, no, you got to tell them. And I'm not really a public speaker. I don't mind sitting like this and talking with my friends, but public speaker in front of a bunch of people. But I just started doing it for the people, you know? I just, just started going out there thinking about thinking about speeches, thinking about oh, talks, thinking about, inspiring. you know, how to, how to put one after another and just, you know, keep it going, <laughs> chaining combo, right? Just yeah. chain wrestling, see, chain see, wrestling. That's why I tell everybody that everybody should train martial arts. Whether you want, like, I don't think everybody has to be a professional fighter, but I think you should be a martial artist. And Lou BJ is using his terminologies on how he attacked public speaking was something that made him feel uncomfortable. So it was a, it was a foe, it was an adversary. And the yeah. tactics that he used mentally were also tactics that he can physically feel that he's done on the mat or in the ring. And there's still tactics and strategies that he used to attack. You know, so yeah. I tell people like a martial artist brain. Thank you for breaking that down hey, for me because I could tell you were speaking and something you, know you were understanding. That's what that's what I that's what I say when I when I was running at first they put not a very big name up against me. They're going to try to w get the election with this person. But they realized right away, I mean, our business, we, we uh, problem solving thousands of a second, thousands while we're sitting there. Someone's trying and to I know I can always take myself <laughs> yeah. up to that. That's why they saw me. They saw me going to the, the forums and the question things and all that. And, and they knew they're like, oh, we're going to have a harder time than we thought because we're constantly... Yeah. Problem solving thousand in, in one second and and we we have no problem us martial artists asking somebody a question we don't know we'll never get embarrassed because if we don't know something in our business we're gonna get knocked out yeah. our teeth knocked out so we have no problem hey wait what do I gotta do again yeah. what okay what is that okay no problem because right that's yeah. our whole life uh, our whole life you gotta tell us chin a chin down hands up our whole life yeah. you know and yeah there's no constant. there's no uh, insult to trying to find information because at the end of the day we're always going to make me better yeah make us as a martial arts better that's why like it's funny jennifer always gets mad because you never lose an argument i'm like no no, no <laughs> it's not that no, we never lose a fight <laughs> <laughs> because while we're talking my brain's doing calculations all right this goes here this goes there i know okay i said this or i know where she's gonna attack on this that's a straw man thing i'm not even gonna jump on <laughs> exactly. it right so i'm going through it listen listen and all of a sudden i'll sit and go oh shit, i'm wrong you know what i mean like 
So immediately I sit there and I look at it and I go, oh, wow, I'm down the wrong path. I actually got, this information I had was false. And that's what I based this yeah, argument off of. That could and happen. I, yeah, so then what I do is I go. And it diffuses it all. Oh, shit. My bad. I'm wrong. Keep going. And then she goes, I'm like, so the problem is, is I don't argue a losing argument. Once yeah, I figure yeah, out that yeah, I've yeah, lost yeah, the argument, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, because it's that's like a fight. Like, you show up an arm bar and go, this is the way I do it. And then you're like, well, yeah. Frank, if you do it this way, watch. You stack me. I'm not going to sit there and go, I'm still going to do it this way. I'm going to go, oh, shit, that was way better. So wait a minute. So you cross your ankle. It's the bottom ankle on the head, top ankle on the top, through your pinch. <laughs> the Dude, that's oh, a let me show yeah, you how to do it. So because I want to get better. I don't care. Right. I'm not going to live or die that the way I'm doing the arm bar was better. It's like, well, screw that. That wasn't better. I want to yeah. be better. So I'm going to readapt my information right off the bat. So that's why I like, don't lose arguments. I'm like, well, no, it's because once I realize I'm wrong, <laughs> I'm I feel yeah, like I it and I'm on your team. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, I'm wrong. Anyways, show me the right way now. And then, yeah. like, But I guess sometimes in an argument when you're emotional, that's not satisfying. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, like, you, yeah. I want to beat you down and see the <laughs> But I'm like, hey. see you, coward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go, oh, you got me. Tap. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. people all the time now. No, we're people not rolling like, We're shoot. not rolling They're like hook up a hit, heel hook. They're out of the bone break. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Hook and I won't fight out of it. Like, I'm, I'll tap. Oh, okay, you got me, dude. All right. Hey, real quick, and you just hold it at about 30%. I'm going to fight out real quick. You know? And to them, it's not satisfying. They're like, oh, man, you weren't like fighting for your life. <laughs> Dude, I'm, all, no, man, you got me. I'm like, no, you, you got me. You, you're, you're, yeah, the knee line was perfect. The entanglement was on. If I, I mean, maybe I could power out of this, but I'm probably going to walk with another limp for the next six weeks. So, no, you got me. Hey, cool. Good job. Hey, let me work out of this. And like, because it's not like, oh my God, you know, you see those guys that just don't want to tap. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's satisfying. Yeah. But with me, yeah. it's like, oh, you got me. And like, could you fight back harder? I'm like, well, why? You, you got the right position. Like, you beat me in the chess match. You got me, and I'm not going to sacrifice my knee to show that it's stronger. My wife's Who never going to be satisfied ever again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk another way. <laughs> She's like, I know. I got other techniques to show you on the ground. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> She's like, when, when have I ever been? But, but yeah, but I, I believe in the fighters, and we've been in so many fights and so many things that, you know, it's easy for us to be honest with people that we just met because, you oh, know, that's our business. Too, yeah. yeah. But, Right, you. I mean, we step. You step in the ring, and in, in that same time, I mean, you could be the king of the world or the biggest embarrassment that ever. Yeah, that's that like, millions of people ever saw. I, think I just have arts. the guts to do it. That's just the, the guts arts to do it. Us, I think like all of us have had like that. Like, I mean, look, when we're young, yeah, that like I'm the baddest motherfucker in the world. And then all of a sudden, you know, you fight enough times, you realize, ah. There's a lot of factors that go into that. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depends like, on the day. Depends, yeah, depends on the day. day. Yeah. You're facing. You know, like, so like it kind of takes that that ego off you. You're like, right. oh, I'm a tough guy. It's a good situation, but like I realize that we're valuable. I'm human. You know what I mean? Like it, it happens. So you don't. That like you know like some guys won't. Most people will never be us because they're too afraid to compete. Because they would rather not have that stigma challenge that yeah, idea yeah. of concept yep, of what yeah. they think they are so it's like well you're actually a coward because you're afraid to actually put yourself out there we will actually go out there and face humiliation i've been there i've walked out of a ring with my head down going man i just got my ass fucking kicked you know what i mean like and dealt with depression for the next week or two god damn it that fucking blew. anyways yeah. you guys want to eat pizza like exactly. fuck you know yeah. not that it doesn't burn us so i'm like well, i'm gonna come back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm yeah. not gonna take it out on my wife i'm gonna take it out on the gym tomorrow yeah, Monday, right? you know what i mean like totally. yeah. but like it, it helps i think some guys don't get their ass kicked so it's like the fear of the unknown of never yeah. so they, they have an ego about them and they're not as uh, confident in themselves that's why people say oh, hey why you're such a nice guy bj yeah you know why because i got my ass kicked so much times you know what am i and a lot of times my dad was there watching me get my ass kicked you know what i mean so if you want me to kick your ass bring your dad he's got to watch no hey, no, no but it, it, helps, it, it yeah. gets that serious it gets that 100%. serious but it takes away all that fake noise it's like do i really want to fight right now or should i just wait four hours well, with my like, gym buddy yeah but gonna... again too i think people mistake the fact that like they're harmless with being like like being us i'm like no no no, no we're not harmless though you know what I mean? like, like George, George said Peterson, it here. I mean, like, yeah. said it great. Like I'm capable of being capable of great violence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like fuck, jujitsu's the art of putting people to sleep and you can kill them if you wanted to, or breaking fucking bones. You know what I mean? MMA mm -hmm. driving the end of someone's face. Like, capable of severe amount of violence is just, and if it's called upon, we'll call upon it. You know what I mean? But like, it's not like I need to prove it to anybody at any moment. Right. So like in a fight or an argument where some guys go, "Are you calling out my manhood?" I'm like, "I don't give a fuck, man." <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll walk away with my head down. But like, if you like, if I go to walk away and you, you know, you step in the way, it's like, all right, well, fuck, you asked for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, no one's gonna blame me for what's like about you to said, happen. Otherwise, there's no morality in it. There's, there's no morality. Just, yeah, just weak men aren't capable of it. Yep. Yeah, I love that's it. That's the truth. Well, uh, 
seriously, thank you so much for taking the time. Real quick before we end, like, what would you give as a recommendation or a suggestion? Seeing what we're doing, what would you be like? You know, it would be really cool if they did this. I love getting perspectives. That's an awesome question. Um, you know what? I, I guess I just have to wa watch you guys as, as it goes on. But, um, you know, I, I you guys... You guys are ahead of what I was thinking when you guys sat down and I thought this was the kind of just like because I saw the different teams so I didn't know what to compare it to IFL or different things. I'm like cool I'm glad they got these different te teams and tomorrow's Henderson or tonight is Henderson versus Bader versus Bader and I, I saw that and then and then when you guys started explaining the structure of the thing I was just like yeah. that's it I just I, well, and even that I love it and I can't wait to watch it and see how it how evolves evolves or you guys what you guys create thank yeah. you and even that actually is done with a purpose because i was watching guys that probably shouldn't be fighting anymore but they still didn't make money so like the stock options that's all him the team aspect of having a coach I'm like well how can we have people that have a name be able to attribute their name and, and and give you know guidance to a next generation but without necessarily taking a punch i'm like well we could put them in a coaching position mm -hmm. so now we have coaches that are actually you know the people that have done stuff in our sport that now they're towards like hey man you know maybe you're more your your way to you know raise enthusiasm isn't maybe to strap on gloves but to be in the corner of that young man or woman you know what i mean and help inspire her in the gym and train yeah. so I'm like oh that's what we can do that that was kind of the the, the thought behind having a real coach that was as a former you know, martial artist or current in our yeah. this uh, tonight you know with both benson and uh and bader are obviously current you know fighters with championships you know but you know going forward you know like you know tito and quentin you know don't know if they're going to fight again but that's why they were able to afford that and, and lend that uh, that expertise but Man. And, and going forward what's so dang cool is as this gets more understood those actually turn into franchises where we want to be the nba of mma wow, where people yeah. can have their own team and that team is its own franchise they can monetize their own wow, so like you'll be able to open up a hawaii team and you can collect together your guys you have your team and that way the coaches are still making money you're part of something that's producing and you're in a position now to actually give back because it financially pays your bills you know what i mean yeah. sometimes we don't realize like why isn't that guy doing that like, well he has to still fucking connect the dots he starts to make ends meet he has to make yeah. money if he could get paid to be in the gym that's mm -hmm. what i want so i want like someone like a tito or stuff like hey let's make it where they're getting paid to actually be in the gym so they can give back all the knowledge and years of, of, of you know of what they've earned and give it to the next group i love it yeah i love it thank you guys hey. for doing that for the thank fighters you. appreciate that yeah I'll work on my handshake next time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you.